Today, I'm very excited to go over the Janome MemoryCraft 9450, which is a sewing only machine, but it is one of my favorite machines because it is, in my opinion, such a perfect machine for so many people out there. If you're a quilter, you're gonna love this machine. If you make bags, you're gonna love this machine. If you're just a general sewer, I think you're also gonna love this machine. It can do so many amazing things. And one of the other things I love about Janome is that you get so much bang for your buck with uh, this machine and with Janome's in general. So we are going to have so many different accessories that we're going to go over here. First of all, um, we have our instruction manual, which having a printed out version is really nice to have handy. But if you prefer um, a DVD, we have a DVD that comes with it, as well as this big box full of goodies. It has 21 feet that it comes with, as well as an additional 15 accessories that it's gonna come with, as well as this really cool program called Stitch Composer that allows you to create your own stitches from scratch. So I'm gonna show you this stitch I created. This is a little mushroom stitch that I think turned out really cute. And we're gonna go over how to do that now because I love showing Stitch, Compo Stitch Composer. It's a really fun little program and you can make endless possibilities with this program. So let's go ahead and switch angles and we're going to stitch out a mushroom. This is our Stitch Composer homepage and this big area right here in the center, this is our workspace. And then we also have the preview down here as well as um, our home pages right up here. One of the nice things about this program is that it allows you to show a image in the background so that you could trace it if you wanted to. But let's first do like a quick simple one. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start, create a start point. And each little click that we make is a stitch. So if I wanted to make a double loop, Let's see this one, if that's not perfect, we can, we can undo and then move it to the right spot so we have the ability to get exactly what we want. And then let's stitch that out. And then let's go ahead and pull out that preview. We'll go to our view tab, select play, and see now we have a double loop that just keeps stitching. You can see how easy that is. Now let's go ahead and make our little mushroom. So we're going to pull up a new tab and we don't need to save this. So we're in the view tab and I want to go to background image. So I'm going to select background and then we're going to type in mushroom. And then it's going to pull up my image here and I can change the size of it if I want. And then I'm also going to lock my screen and then also select transparent and then that's going to set the background so that it doesn't move so i can't move it now i'm actually going to undo because i just created stitch but i can't move it and it's gone behind my grid so that i have can see what i'm doing a little bit better so the first thing i want to do is i want to create a start point so i'm going to go over and create my start point and then just go up and around creating my mushroom shape. And I'm doubling this up to get this second line here. And then back down. And then stitched out. And then we're going to select our finish, which is going to add our locking stitches here at the end. And you can see how easy and quick that is. I could also make and edit that if I want to. Let's go ahead and see this stitched out. And then we can see our little mushroom stitching here down at the bottom. And I think that turned out really cute. Now, if I want to save this, you can stop that from stitching. Now, if I wanted to save this, I could go file, save as, and then save this to a USB stick, bring it over to my machine, and then open it within the machine to um, pull that in and save it into our machine itself. So I think 
you can see how easy this is to do. And you can just with very little practice create a really adorable little stitch. But then you can also perfect it and get some really decorative and detail stitches on this. But it's a really fun little program to play with. Now that we've gone over Stitch Composer, let's go over a few of our accessories. So like I mentioned, it comes with 21 different feet and 15 different accessories, including this beautiful extra large clear acrylic extension table that's going to give you so much space to work with. So not only do you have this 11 inch throat space, but you also have a large workspace on the right and the left side of your needle. Having a larger workspace allows you to create your larger projects with greater ease. So not only do we have our two AccuFeed feet, which are a uh, more advanced version of a walking foot, but we also have three different stitch plates. So let's go over our AccuFeed feet. So this is our AccuFeed, which is a more advanced version of our walking foot. This bottom part comes off and is interchangeable. It comes with one, but you do have a dish, um, the option to buy different bases for this. There's a stitch in the ditch, and there's also a quarter inch piecing, one a straight stitch and an open toe. And these just interchange, you put them at an angle and push forward, and then you're gonna kind of feel it engage and then now you have the changed AccuFeed. So you're gonna have your standard AccuFeed flex foot as well as your HP two foot. And the HP two foot is an AccuFeed version of the HP foot, which is going to correspond with our HP plate. This is our HP plate. The HP stands for high performance. And what makes this plate so special is that our hole, or where our needle goes, is on the left-hand side. Traditionally, on a zigzag or on your straight stitch plate, when you're quarter-inch piecing, you're going to be over on the right-hand side. But when you have a top-loading bobbin, your tail's going to be on the left-hand side. So it's going to have to move all the way over to the right to come up and it loses a tiny bit of its integrity that way. It becomes slightly not quite as perfect as it is when it goes straight up like it does here with the HP plate. So basically what it does is it tricks a non-straight stitch machine to act like a straight stitch machine. So that thread is just gonna go straight up and give you the most perfect straight stitch that you can get. Also on all of our stitch plates, they have um, patented markings that allow you to have a quarter inch from all of these measurements from your um, needle. So you don't have to mark at all, which makes piecing a lot faster. Our straight stitch plate gives us a lot of options as well. So we also have our patented markings on our plate as well as our instructions on how to attach our bobbins or install our bobbins. But the straight stitch plate actually has three different openings. The center one is a center hole, a circle, and then the right and the left are ovals. And what makes those beneficial is that when you're doing a quarter inch here, you actually have a little bit of wiggle room to move your needle back and forth. So if you want a scant quarter inch or a normal quarter inch, that opening is going to allow you to have a little bit of wiggle room on the right and the left of the center of the needle. So this is, I love this um, plate because this really does help. It gives you that little bit of wiggle room, but it also helps your needle from getting sucked down into the machine. And then lastly, we have our zigzag stitch plate. And to change our plate, we have a really um, awesome one-step needle plate conversion that all we have to do is snap that down and lift our foot to get this out of our way. And then now we have our zigzag plate. And the zigzag plate also has the same markings as our other two plates so that our foot has um, our markings, it has our dashed and dotted lines for our quarter inch piecing to line up at these different um, angles. And then to put your stitch plate back in, all you have to do is lift the foot up, put it at a slight 45 degree angle when you're sort of putting it in first, and then push down 
on that bullseye. And then your screen's going to ask you just to make sure that you have the right plate on and then you're good to go. One of the great things that I love about the Janome stitch plates is that your machine knows whatever stitch plate that you have on. So you're not gonna be able to damage your, your machine by doing a decorative stitch on the straight stitch plate. So let's go ahead and switch plates so you can see that. So if you look at the screen here, there's all kinds of decorative stitches here. So if we pop this off, and put our straight stitch plate on. Push down at that bullseye, and then it's just telling me what stitch plate we have on. You can see all of my stitches that would damage that machine, like a zigzag or um, some sort of decorative stitch, is all gone or grayed out. So it's the same thing with off my alphabet or tapering or anything that would damage my machine. It's all blocked out or grayed out so that I don't accidentally hit the wrong button and could damage the machine. Put our zigzag plate back on, press that on a diagonal, and then just hit the OK button. And now we have all of our decorative stitches that are back. Speaking of decorative stitches, there are actually 350 built-in decorative stitches that are all within different categories. And as since we've already gone over Stitch Composer, there really are endless stitches. And to make them even more endless, we also have Favorite Stitch in Resume Mode on this machine, which I absolutely love. I love Favorite Stitch and I love Resume Mode. So what those are is Favorite Stitch, it allows me to change any stitch to my preferable settings. So let's say I like to do a quarter inch piecing at 9.0 because I like a scant quarter inch at a 2.2. I can change that to my machine, hit favorite stitch, and then it's going to save that every time that I sew, it's going to be there. So let's actually switch angles and show you that. Let's say I want to change my stitch number one to my quarter inch stitch. So I'm gonna move that all the way over to nine and then shrink down to 2.2. And that's my favorite setting. And I want this same settings to come up every time I sew. So I'm going to open up that window and I'm going to hit FS, which stands for favorite stitch. I'm going to select that. And then I'm going to, there's gonna be a folder with an arrow sticking in. We're going to select that folder and it's going to save into the folder. And then also I wanna point out here, the nine and the 2.2 are now yellow, which means I have edited that particular setting. But the tension and the pressure foot pressure has stayed the same because I haven't adjusted those. But then when I close that window, you can see these are still yellow. But if I select a different stitch, come back to it, now it has my 9 and 2.2. I can override that if I would prefer. So I can always override it as many times as I want, which is really beneficial because if you want to change your settings, you can do that. And then resume mode is another of my favorite features. And what makes that so special is that let's say I'm sewing an applique and I have a particular setting that I prefer and that I want um, to save. I can save Save that as a favorite stitch but then not only that when I'm sewing and I'm done for the day but I'm not done with my project I can turn my machine off turn it back on and then it's going to ask me do I want to resume my last stitch and if I select okay it's going to go to the last thing I sewed regardless of what it was or where it is in my machine. So that way I don't have to find that same decorative stitch or same applique stitch that it's going to come up automatically for me. So it really saves some time and I love both of those features and I think they're um, both features that we don't, people don't use quite as often as they should because they're so beneficial. So now that we've gone over all of the different or several of the different feet because there are still several feet for free motion. We have an open toe, free motion foot, closed toe, we have darning feet. There's there's like six or seven different feet just for free motion. We have our stitch plates and we've got our AccuFeet Flex feet. I also want to point out the LED lighting on this machine. There are some really good lighting on this. So we not only have our LED lighting here in our 11 inch throat space, but we also have LED lighting in front of the needle. But in addition to that, which is the fun part, we have this retractable LED highlight that is also 
adjustable so it gives you shadow free sewing. So not only does this light come out, but this door also opens. So it allows you to get into your machine, dust it, or if a thread breaks, it allows you to clean out uh, or grab that thread so you don't have to unthread the entire machine, which can be really um, a time saver. And that way you're not pulling the thread in the opposite direction than you're supposed to. So I love that that door opens and a large variety of our Janome machines actually do that, which I love. Let's go over sewing applications. Sewing applications is like your manual built into your machine. It gives you all of the information that you'll need for a specific type of sewing. So let's say we wanted to do an applique. Sewing application is going to tell you what stitch to use, what foot to use, and any settings that you may need. It takes all the guesswork out of it, which is so much easier than having to remember all the stuff. The sewing applications does it basically for you. So let's go ahead and switch over to our screen here. And our sewing applications is this t-shirt icon here at the top right hand corner. So I'm going to select sewing applications and we have um, more than one page here. So if you look at the top here, which is 1-2, which means there's more than one page. So we're going to um, turn our page till we get to our so, um, applique page. It also has all of our quilting in here as well. And if we selected quilting, um, it would give us our free motion quilting, our ruler work, any of our settings, here's our ruler work, um, any settings for quilting all within this category. We also have variable zigzag, which is a really fun feature on this machine. Variable zigzag is it's actually a Janome exclusive, which is really fun. And it is a really fun technique that allows you to change the width of your zigzag as you're sewing. So if you're an art quilter, you're gonna just love this. You're going to just love the fact that you can create so much beautiful texture with this technique because it uses your knee lift so that when you put pressure on your knee lift, your zigzag is going to get wider. And then you, if you lower the pressure on the knee lift, it's going to get narrower. So you can get some really cool um, shapes that way, add some really great texture for art quilting or landscape quilting or really anything that you want texture to. It's a really fun technique to play with and you can do some really awesome stuff. So let's go back to sewing applications. We're in the sewing applications. We're in our variable zigzag. We're going to go back and it has our page here um, and we're in our quilting so we're going to actually exit out of the quilting part and we could select our applique. One of the nice things about our applique feature is we have what's called the cornering function. So when I select this button right here you're going to see a 90 degree angle. So what this does is when I'm doing a blanket stitch, the way a blanket stitch stitches out is that, you know it does a little bite and then it goes forward and then back and then forward. But if you're at your corner and the stitch in its stitch rotation is supposed to go backwards, what you can do is keep your cornering function on and then select your begin again. And that's going to start your stitch from the beginning. So the way that's going to stitch out is like so. So we're going to stitch this out. We're going to slow this down here. And I'm going to stitch out this blanket stitch. And then when I get to wherever my corner would be, let's say I'm at my corner now, what I can do is I'm going to hit my begin again button. Let's actually put our pivot on. And then begin stitching. And then instead of stitching backwards, it's going to stitch forward because it's at the beginning of its stitch rotation. So then now we have our auto pivot that we could turn again, hit our begin again function, and then begin to sew. We can use our scissor button. It's going to lift our foot up. 
So all we have to do is take our fabric out and then instead of stitching off, it just stitched around. So it gave you that perfect corner for an applique. So as you can see, the awesome different features that you can do with the 9450 with the anything from the 11 inch throat space, the 350 built-in stitches from the 91 needle positions, the 1060 stitches per minute. There are so many amazing features on the 9450. And I think you guys are gonna just love it. And especially once you sew on it because it really has has such a great feel to it that I think you guys are going to just love this machine. I'd like to thank you guys so much for having me. As always, it's been a pleasure and um, thanks again. All right, bye guys.